Welcome, everyone. Today, we are diving into the crucial topic of drugs used to treat nutritional disorders. Proper nutrition is the foundation of health, and sometimes, despite our best efforts, medical interventions become necessary to address imbalances and deficiencies. We'll explore how medications can help bridge the gap and support overall well-being. Think of nutrition as the body's fuel. Without the right nutrients, it's like trying to run a car on empty or with the wrong oil. When diet alone isn't enough, medications and supplements step in to correct imbalances and support recovery. Let's begin with a fundamental understanding of vitamins. Remember that our bodies can't produce most vitamins, with the exceptions of vitamin D and K, which require bacterial assistance. This means we must obtain them through our diet. It's also important to distinguish between water-soluble vitamins, like the B vitamins and vitamin C, and lipid-soluble vitamins, such as A, D, E, and K, due to their different absorption and storage mechanisms. Water-soluble vitamins like vitamin C and the B vitamins are not stored in the body. That means daily intake is essential. Fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K are stored in fat tissue. This makes them more prone to toxicity if taken in excess. Tip, water-soluble, wash away, fat-soluble, stored away. Now, let's take a closer look at specific vitamins, their functions, and their sources. Vitamin A, for example, is vital for healthy teeth, skin, and vision and can be found in foods like eggs, meat, and leafy green vegetables. Vitamin D, often called the sunshine vitamin, plays a crucial role in calcium absorption for strong bones and teeth, and is present in dairy products, fish, and of course, sunlight. Understanding these connections is key to recognizing potential deficiencies. Vitamin A, eyes, skin, and immunity found in carrots, eggs, liver vitamin D, bone health, calcium absorption, from sunlight, fish, dairy, vitamin C, wound healing, collagen production, citrus fruits, bell peppers, B12, nerve health, and red blood cells in meats and dairy. Moving on to minerals, these are equally essential for various bodily functions. Calcium, as we know, is critical for bone health while iron is vital for oxygen transport. This cheat sheet provides a quick reference for the roles and sources of minerals like magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, chloride, sulfur, copper, and zinc, as well as trace minerals like manganese, iodine, chromium, cobalt, selenium, and fluoride. Calcium, bones and muscle function iron oxygen transport in red blood cells, magnesium, muscle relaxation, heart rhythm, zinc, immune function and wound healing, iodine, thyroid hormone production. Tip, minerals don't just come from supplements. Many are found in leafy greens, meats, dairy, and nuts. Let's pause for a moment and consider a fundamental question related to healing. Can a person truly heal without proper nutrition? Malnutrition can slow wound healing, weaken immunity, and lead to complications. Medications can't work properly if the body doesn't have the nutrients it needs. Before we delve deeper into specific treatments, it's important to acknowledge the broader context of health and nutrition. Factors like alcohol abuse, access to healthcare, digestive health, disability, poverty, and body image can all significantly impact an individual's nutritional status and overall well-being. Recognizing these interconnected issues is crucial for providing holistic care. Issues like alcohol use, which interferes with nutrient absorption, low income, and food insecurity, mental health and body image disorders, Holistic care means addressing these barriers, not just writing prescriptions. When assessing patients, recognizing the signs of nutritional deficiencies is paramount. For example, 
Issues with the eyes might indicate a vitamin A or riboflavin deficiency, while gastrointestinal problems could be linked to a lack of B vitamins. Similarly, skin problems might point to deficiencies in vitamin A, zinc, niacin, vitamin K, or vitamin C. Understanding these connections helps us target our interventions effectively. Eye changes. Think vitamin A or riboflavin GI symptoms. Often point to B vitamin deficiency skin issues. Can indicate lack of A, C, K, zinc, or niacin case. Scenario, a patient presents with poor wound healing and easy bruising. What do you suspect? Vitamin C deficiency. While deficiencies are a concern, it's equally important to be aware of the risks of hypervitaminosis or vitamin toxicity. Excessive intake of certain vitamins such as A, C, D, E, B3, B6, and B9 can lead to a range of adverse effects, including nausea, vomiting, fatigue, headache, blurred vision, bone pain, muscle weakness, dysrhythmias, and even liver impairment. Moderation and careful monitoring are key. Excess vitamins A, D, E, B6, B9, C can lead to nausea, vomiting fatigue, liver problems, muscle weakness, cardiac dysrhythmias. Drug interactions are another critical consideration when addressing nutritional disorders. Vitamin A, for instance, can interact with tetracyclines and pose risks during pregnancy. Vitamin D can interact with other forms of vitamin D, calcium, thiazide diuretics, and digoxin. Being aware of these potential interactions is essential for preventing adverse outcomes and ensuring patient safety. Vitamin A plus tetracyclines, increased pressure in the brain vitamin D, pulse thiazides, risk of hypercalcemia vitamin D, pulse digoxin, increases risk of arrhythmias. Tip, always review supplement use when taking a medication history. Let's focus on vitamin A as a prototype lipid soluble vitamin. It's indicated for deficiency states, night blindness, and slow wound healing. While side effects are uncommon at recommended doses, high doses can cause nausea, vomiting, fatigue, irritability, night sweats, alopecia, and dry skin. It's also crucial to remember that vitamin A is classified as pregnancy category A at low doses, but category X at doses above the recommended daily allowance. Now, let's consider folic acid or vitamin B9 as a prototype water-soluble vitamin. It plays a vital role in DNA synthesis and red blood cell production. Deficiency states can lead to serious health problems. While side effects are uncommon at recommended doses, parenteral administration can cause allergic hypersensitivity. Folic acid is pregnancy category A at low doses, but category C at doses above the RDA. Magnesium sulfate is another important medication to understand. It's indicated for hypomagnesemia as a laxative as an anticonvulsant, and in cases of premature labor. When administering magnesium sulfate intravenously, continuous cardiac monitoring is essential. Monitor serum magnesium levels every six hours and watch for signs of toxicity, such as flushed skin, sedation, confusion, and muscle weakness. It's contraindicated in patients with cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, or kidney disease. Parenteral nutrition, or TPN, is a complex intervention that requires careful management. TPN solutions are hypertonic and contain high concentrations of dextrose and proteins. Potential complications include fluid shifts, fluid overload, hyperglycemia, and osmotic diuresis. TPN must be administered via a central line using an infusion pump. Daily weight monitoring, regular lab monitoring, and proper storage are essential for patient safety. Given to patients who can't eat, 
bowel surgery, severe pancreatitis or critical illness must be given through central line risks, hyperglycemia fluid shifts, sepsis daily weight, blood glucose checks and lab monitoring are essential. Obesity is a significant health concern and it's important to remember that non-pharmacologic strategies should always be the first line of defense. Lifestyle modifications, such as diet and exercise, are crucial for long-term weight management. While drugs for treating obesity can be helpful, they typically produce only modest results and are often taken for a limited time. Orlistat is one medication used to treat obesity. Its mechanism of action involves inhibiting gastric and pancreatic lipases to prevent fat absorption. It's indicated for individuals with a BMI of 27 or greater with risk factors or a BMI greater than 30. Common adverse effects include gastrointestinal symptoms such as flatus, oily stools, and abdominal pain. It can also decrease the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins and interact with warfarin requiring careful monitoring of PTINR. Anorexians are another class of drugs used for obesity, but they come with potential risks and limitations. Drugs like diethylpropion, phentermine combined with topiramate, locaserin, and bupropion and naltrexone work through various mechanisms to suppress appetite. However, they can cause side effects such as suicide risk nervous system effects and may only be used for a limited time due to tolerance. Meds include phentermine topiramat lorcaserin buprop ion plus naltrexone. Risks CNS stimulation increased suicide. Risk short-term use only due to tolerance. Finally, let's briefly touch on other drugs used for obesity such as GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide. These medications decrease hunger, slow gastric emptying, and stimulate insulin release from the pancreas. For more detailed information, refer to resources on type 2 diabetes medications. They decrease hunger slow, gastric emptying, increase insulin secretion. Also used in type 2 diabetes, these medications are injectable and may offer significant weight loss. Tip, monitor for nausea, vomiting, and pancreatitis symptoms.